Hi guys, Mark here from MarkChanMovement.com, physiotherapy and fitness and health. I just had an interesting conversation with one of my clients who's had some back pain. Usually I treat people both ways, so I treat them as a uh, coach, but I also treat them as a physiotherapist. Sometimes I uh, separate the, the two, so I do only the training and somebody else takes care of the physiotherapy or you know somebody else um, has a trainer and I do the physiotherapy. Now this particular person has some back pain uh, and has been has been having some back pain for for a long time and uh, has been going to a therapist and the therapist told him that uh, it's because of a uh, movement disposition and malalignment in the hip and whenever he goes to the therapist this person would adjust this position uh, as a result uh, for whatever this person does the back feels better but then something along the day or along the week sets it off again so we are in this sort of cycle um, now there's there's a I do have a problem with this and the the problem being is you can't adjust uh, a lower back or you can't adjust hips that are out of place so we used to think this way you might still believe this is true you go to a, uh, a specialist they take a look at your spine they say oh this spine part is out of alignment this is uh, your hips are crooked or whatever and we need to put them in place and then they lay you down and they they twist you up like a pretzel and they go okay, you heard you hear this sound of popping and cracking and that is supposed to indicate that things are somehow back in place this has been uh, massively debunked. Uh, to give you one example, uh, they've done some studies with imaging. So somebody would come in, they would actually have a, a noticeable disposition because it does happen. It's very rare, but it does happen. People that have car crashes, for example, they can have a pelvis malalignment or whatever. So they would go in, get an, uh, an x-ray, and they would actually show this. Then they had some practitioners manipulate the uh, the pelvis with the noticeable crack and pop and ooh and ah and it feels so good now and then they would uh, go into a scan again what do you know the disposition is still there now that proves two things one the what we think we do with an adjustment isn't necessarily what actually happens and this is important and I'll, I'll explain to you why after the second reason the second reason is even though a method can be effective in treating pain doesn't mean it actually addresses the issue the way you think it does now the reason this is important is because of a nocebo effect nocebo is the opposite of a placebo effect so placebo effect for those that don't know uh, if I give you a painkiller a little pill and I say this is gonna help with your pain it is a painkiller typically is gonna help with your pain if I give you a sugar pill and I tell you this is a painkiller, it's going to help with your pain. Because the fact that you believe it's a painkiller, in most cases you feel less pain. That's what we call a placebo effect. A nocebo effect is the opposite of a placebo effect. So if I say to you, you have pain because your back is out of place, then that creates the idea that you have a problem with your back. And the next time that you feel pain, you might jump to the conclusion that that pain might be there because your back is out of place. And then the only solution that you have is that, that one person that can adjust your back into place because the last time he did that, you had less pain. So that must mean that only this person can adjust my back and fix my problem. That's a problem because what happens if that person is not there anymore? You know, uh, uh, then you might feel lo lost. The other thing is it's based on a false assumption. So this entire adjustment usually isn't necessary. There usually isn't even an, an uh, alignment problem because it's so loosely thrown around. Oh yeah, your, your hip is crooked, your back is this, your back is that. Uh, the clinical assessments that, that we do are far less reliable than we like to, to believe uh, than we like to believe they are. So sometimes the, these things get thrown around so easy and they're, they're, not, they're not true. So they need to be um, tested 
to see if that's actually the case. Because otherwise you might be walking around with this idea for the rest of your life and you'll be dependent on that particular practitioner or another practitioner to help you. If that's not necessary and you can fix the issue yourself, which you can. I, I've seen this hundreds of times. Every physiotherapy, um, uh, every ther therapist or manual therapist or whatever that is updated on the research knows about this. And uh, most experienced physiotherapists have seen many, many cases of this being the case. So, yeah, don't let this idea get stuck in your head. And a little side note that I will say, that doesn't mean that whatever that person is doing is not good for you. If you go to that specific person with this client, he goes there, whatever the therapist does, he feels better afterwards and it helps him getting back into his gym routine or whatever it is that he needs to do. That is completely fine. But the belief issue needs to be addressed. So if this is you or you have somebody in your, your family or friend circle that, that has still have the idea that this is the case, Feel free to like this, share this for them and uh, help them out because uh, understanding that this is not the case is the first step to living a life without pain. Thank you for watching and see you at the next episode.